a few videos ago, we saw that we could maximize total utility for our five, given our $5 spending by calculating the marginal utility per dollar for each incremental dollar we could spend on each of these goods, and then just for each dollar maximizing it. So our first dollar, we got 100 utility points per dollar for that first chocolate bar, and that was more than any than, than the first fruit, so that's where we spent it. And then we got more for the second chocolate bar than we would have even for that first pound of fruit, so we spent it there. Then for the third pound, or for the third bar of chocolate, and then it became equal to spend for the for the first pound of fruit, so then we spent the next two dollars on that first pound of fruit because the price of fruit were two dollars. What I want to do in this video is explore what happens when I change the price of the chocolate bars, what ch happens to our marginal utility per dollar over here, and what, in particular, what happens to the quantity demanded. And if you think about what we're, ha what we're doing is, we figured out with one price what was the quantity demanded. We demanded three bars. If we change the price and we get another quantity demanded, we're essentially starting to plot out our demand curve. And we can actually derive our demand curve from this information right over here. So let's see how we could do that. So let's now assume, let's now assume that our chocolate bars are two dollars. So now we're going to calculate. So this marginal, the marginal utility per dollar. This applies to both of these columns. This is for when it was one dollar per bar. This is now when it's two dollars per bar. Well, for that first bar, I'm still getting a hundred points of marginal utility, but now it's two dollars. So a hundred divided by two, a hundred divided by two is going to give me fifty marginal utility points per dollar. Then. For that next bar, I'm gonna, I get 80 marginal utility points. I'm still enjoying it, but enjoying it a little bit less. But I'm paying $2 for it. So I'm getting 80 divided by 2 is 40 points, you know, and I'm just giving these arbitrary units, 40 points per dollar. Then the third bar is 30 points per dollar. Then the fourth bar, the fourth bar is 20 points per dollar. Now how would I spend my $5? So let me do this a little bit. Let me do it over here. So how would I spend my $5 now? So my first dollar, where would I get the most marginal utility per dollar? Where would I get the most bang for my buck? So my very first dollar, I can either buy half a bar here. I could buy half a bar here. And I'm assuming that for the sake of, for the sake of simplicity, let's assume that I get the same marginal utility per dollar for the first half a bar and for the first bar. That is kind of constant until I get to one entire bar. And that's also true for even if I buy a fraction of the pound here. So my first dollar, I can't use these numbers. This is when the bars were a dollar per bar. Now they're two dollars per bar. This is the reality. So now actually it makes sense for me to, at least for that first dollar, I can buy a half pound of my fruit at a marginal utility per dollar of 60. So I will buy. I, my first dollar will go towards 0.5 pounds, 0.5 pounds of fruit, of fruit, and I'm getting a marginal utility per dollar of 60. Now, where is my second dollar going to go? My second dollar is going to go. Well, I can still get another half pound at a marginal utility of 60. I can remember we have to ignore this right here for the sake of this argument or for the sake of this scenario right now. So I can still get another half pound for marginal utility per per dollar of 60. So now I buy another I, I buy another half pound of fruit and I my, my marginal utility per dollar is 60. Now, where is where is my third dollar? My third dollar going to be spent? Well, I could spend it now on, I could spend it now at, at, a, at a rate of a, a dollar per half bar or two dollars per bar for chocolate or a dollar per half bar, two dollars per bar for fruit over here. So I'm actually neutral. So I could spend it, let me just for the sake of fun say, let's spend it on half a bar of chocolate. Half a bar of chocolate. And my marginal utility per dollar is 50. Is 50. Then my fourth dollar, my fourth dollar, once again, I could do a couple of different things here. I could buy another half bar because I can buy up to a whole bar at this marginal utility per dollar, up to a whole bar. So why I do that? So I'll buy another half chocolate bar. So now I have a whole chocolate bar. And once again, I'm able to continue buying that at 50. 
50 utility units per dollar. And then my fifth dollar, my fifth dollar over here, what would I do with that? Well, I don't want to buy I, I don't want to buy any more chocolate bars because my marginal utility per dollar of the chocolate bar, because I've I've exhausted kind of what I can buy at this utility, my this utility per dollar. So my marginal utility per dollar has gone down now. But now I can still buy fruit at that same 50. So now with that dollar, since the, the fruit is two dollars per pound, I can buy another half pound of fruit for for at, at a marginal utility per dollar rate of fifty. So now I buy another another half pound of fruit at a marginal utility per dollar of 50. And you can calculate the whole the, the entire the the um, total of marginal utility I got. This is a marginal utility per dollar and this is and this is a dollar spent at that marginal utility per dollar. So my total mar my total utility I should say, the marginal utility is the increment, but my total utility now is 60 plus 60 is 120 plus 50 plus 50 plus 50. So it's one 120 plus 150 is equal to 270 total utility. Total utility. But even more interesting here, let's think about the quantity of chocolate bars that I have now bought once the price has gone up. I have now bought exactly one chocolate bar. So you could say my third and fourth dollars were spent on one bar right over here. I bought one bar. So let's think about it. All else equal. Remember, ceteris paribus. So we haven't changed the price of fruit. We haven't changed consumer preferences, which would have changed your marginal utility numbers right over here. All else equals what happened just when we changed the price of chocolate bars. Let me write it down. So if we just, just think about chocolate. So if we just think about chocolate bars. So let me write price and quantity. When the price was $1, when the price was one dollar, the quantity demanded, the quantity demanded was fifty. Uh, sorry, the quantity demanded was three bars. That was the first video we saw on marginal utility. We demanded three bars. Now, when the price, now when the price is has gone up to two dollars, the quantity demanded is exactly one bar is exactly one bar. And we could do everything in between. We could we could see what happens if the price was $1.50 or if the price was 50 cents if we actually lowered the price. We would see how the how the and there might actually be a situation where you would have to have higher quantities here especially when you lower the price. But by doing that you can you can just using the assuming you have enough rows here and we might not have it if you lowered the price. But assuming you have the marginal utility at different quantities for the two goods, you can figure out exactly how much chocolate someone would buy given different changes in price. So we, we at least have two points for the demand curve now. So if we assume that this is price and this is quantity right over here, when the price was $1, the quantity demanded was 3. And when the price is $2, the quantity demanded the quantity demanded is 1. So there we have two points. We have two points for our demand curve. So our demand curve might look something might look something like that. But this is all the if it was linear, it would go straight, it would go something straight like that. But we at least have two points on the curve and we could keep trying different prices out using this information to figure out the exact to figure out the exact shape of that curve.